One of the most fundamental concepts in JavaScript is the primitive data type and the reference data type. Understanding this group of data types would give you a deeper knowledge of JavaScript. You'll be able to work with values of different data types better, and you'll be able to avoid a lot of errors that could occur when working with different data types. So in this video, I'll be using code examples as well as visual examples to explain the difference between primitive and reference data types. A simple way to look at primitive data types is that these types are for static values while the reference data types are for dynamic values and what do i mean by this let's look at this simple code example i have name variable with a string value of decode and i have an array variable with this array value this is a static value and the reason for this is when javascript sees this value javascript knows just how much space is required to store this value in memory but in the case of this array this is a dynamic value and why do I say that this array here has just three items but later on in your code you can do array dot push four and five you can also do array dot pop which removes the last value in different places in your code you can modify this array to contain more or less values so in this case this is a dynamic value and as a result JavaScript cannot determine how much space is required to store this in memory so coming back to this this is why I said primitive data types are for static values and reference data types are for the dynamic values and to also add to this primitive data types are stored directly in the stack memory reference data types which are dynamic are stored in the heap memory so the stack memory is for values that javascript already knows how much size is required but the heap memory is for values that javascript doesn't know how much space is required and apart from strings which have static values other data types that have static values are undefined null number boolean symbol and big int and for reference data types all data types that falls under the object category falls under the reference type arrays falls under object functions falls under object and objects falls under object so now that we have a little foundation of how primitive data types are different from reference data types let's even dive in deeper so now i'm going to create some diagrams for this box we're going to call this the stack memory so this is where javascript would store the primitive values and here this is where javascript would store the dynamic values i'm going to replace all of this code with this so here we have declared three variables name number and it's raining this holds string this holds number this holds boolean oops this should hold boolean not number and then here we have this array and this holds an array this holds an object with just one property and this holds a function now let's see how these different values will be allocated in memory for the stack memory we have a name variable and this has d code and then we have number i'm going to to duplicate this and we have 50 is raining and we have false so this is the stack memory now for the object array and our function this is not going to be stored on the stack memory this would be oh i call this reference memory instead of heap memory so for the array the object and the function this would not be stored in the stack memory this will be stored in the heap memory so for the array this has one two three what is going to happen here in this heap memory is that when this is stored in the heap memory it would have an address let's just say the address for this is add r1 this is just an example then for the object we have youtube decode this is stored somewhere else in the heap memory and this would have addr2 for example address 2 for the function this would have addr3 and then we have this function like this these addresses which are references would be stored on the stack memory so for our array variable what we're going to have is array and then we have addr1 this points to this for the object we have obj and this would have addr2 point to this for the function print addr3 and this would reference this so this is a visual representation of what happens in the stack and heap memory when you declare variables of primitive data types or reference data types as you can see for decode 50 false these values are stored directly on the stack memory but for the objects which are array obj and print these values are stored on the heap memory and the address of their location on that memory would be assigned to the variable in the stack memory now why is all this information important well first let's look at an example where we try to modify a primitive 
primitive value. Here we have cons name equals decode. What happens if I do cons name two equals name? What is going to happen here is that JavaScript will assign the value that name holds in the stack memory to name two. I'm just going to put this in the stack name decode. Now, when we do name two equals name, the value that name holds in the stack memory will be assigned to name two. And the value that name holds is decode. That means coming here, name two is now going to hold decode. This is how copying primitive values work. But it happens a bit different when you're trying to copy reference values. Let's say we have an array, one, two, three, and then we do array two is equals to array. Now, what happens is that this value would not be copied to array two instead the reference would be copied to array two so coming back to our diagram array and remember this will point to an address let's call this adr1 and then somewhere in the heap memory we we'll have adr1 and then we have an array of one two three now when you assign array to array two it means javascript will look into the stack memory and it will copy adr1 to array two so you're going to have something like this in the stack memory array two is equal to addr1 what you see here is that this array is pointing to this part of memory and this is also pointing to this part now coming back to our example if we do something like name 2 equals something and this would not work because it's a constant let me just turn this to let let me change this let me change everything to let in fact now if we change name 2 equals to something now if i come here and i do console.log name 2 and then i do console.log name if i run this javascript file you can see that that name two is something because we changed it here while name remains decode which is this so even if we assign this variable to this it doesn't mean that changing name two will affect name when you do this assignment what you're doing is you are assigning the value that name holds to name two but things are going to be different with arrays so if i come here now and i say array two dot push and then let's say i push four five eight if i say const console.log array 2 and I say console.log array if I come here and I run this you can see that array 2 is 1 2 3 4 5 8 because we pushed into it but array has now been updated to 1 2 3 4 5 8 so what happens here is that when you say array 2 dot push 4 5 8 JavaScript will look at array 2 in the stack memory it sees this address and then it would go to the value in this address and then it would add 4 5 8 but since array is pointing to the same address here when you try to assess array as we're doing here console log array you can see that this is pointing to the same location and we have one two three four five eight so when you modify a primitive value you are modifying the value in the stack memory here where we did name two equals something it means name two here will be something but it doesn't affect name even if you actually copy the value of name to name two but when it comes to objects, when you try to do a copy like let array 2 equals array, you're going to copy the reference or the address that array holds in the stack memory to array 2. And because array here holds ADDR1, it will copy that to array 2. And then when you modify array 2 by doing array 2.push.pop or whatever, it's going to change the value in the heap memory. And because this array is also pointing to that value in the heap memory, when you try to assess this, this would also be affected so if you don't want changes in array 2 to affect array or you don't want changes in array to affect array 2 then you have to store array 2 in a different memory location and how can you do that let's say you want to copy this to array 2 you can use the spread operator so you can have an array like this and then you have the spread operator and you have array if you want to learn more about the spread operator I have a video on that i'll link it in the video description so what we are doing here now is we have cloned this to be here but what would happen is that this will be stored in a different part of the heap memory so by doing something like this what you are saying is here we have one two three which only points to array and then by cloning this this would be stored somewhere else we can call this addr2 this will now be addr2 which is pointing to this so this way we are able to clone the value which is one two three but we are not 
copying the address instead we are assigning a new address in heap memory to this and now when you do array 2 dot push 458 if i come back and run this you can see that console log array 2 is 1 2 3 4 5 8 because we pushed into array 2 but console log array remains 1 2 3 because by doing this we don't copy the reference we only copy the value which is 1 2 3 and the same thing applies to object let's say you have an object like youtube decode by using the spread operator if we have obj2 spread obj this will be assigned to a location in memory let's say this is addr5 and then this will be assigned to let's say addr10 that way by modifying obj you would not be modifying obj2 so you can see how reference data types can be tricky right because with primitive data types we are copying the value we are copying this value to this variable but for the reference data type if you try to do something like this you'll be copying the reference instead of the value so you have to be careful when you are cloning arrays or objects so that you are actually cloning the value and not the reference another reason why you also need to understand how these data types are different is when it comes to comparisons let's say we have a name variable of decode and we have a name to variable of decode now as you can see these variables are holding the same values right if we come here now we say console.log name equals name to to see what that name name is equal to name2. If I clear my console and I run this, you can see it is true because they hold the same value. But now let's say we have an array which also applies to object. I'm just using array for this video but the same concept applies to object or functions. One, two, three and let's say we have array two of one two three now if i come here and i say console.log array is equals to array two and i run this we get false now why do you think this is the case let me explain again using diagram now first off i declared name and name two so let me put that here name two decode now when we did a comparison of name and name two javascript would look into the stack memory what does name hold it holds decode what does name two hold it holds decode decode is equal to decode and that is true but now for our array here we have an array with one two three the array would be stored in somewhere in the heap memory so here we're going to do addr 552 just for an example sake i'm not saying this is how the memory addresses actually are we have one two three so this will be addr 54 two points to this and then the second array we declared is array two so javascript would need to assign another place in the heap memory for one two three let's say somewhere here and this is addr 404 <laughs> and this also holds one two three here in the stack memory would have array two with addr 404 point to this place here now coming back to this example when we say array equal 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 array two comparing the two values you may think that you are comparing one two three with one two three but that is not what javascript does javascript will look into the stack memory for array coming here it sees that okay array holds this value which is a reference addr542 then javascript will look into the memory for array 2 and coming here array 2 is addr404 addr542 is not equal to addr404 and that is why we get false when we try to check if they are equal so again javascript does not check addr 542 and check this value and check if this value is equal to this value nope javascript will only check if the references are equal but now let's say we do something like const array 2 is equals to array if you remember when we saw earlier this would copy the reference that array holds in the stack memory to array 2 so now if i run this you see we now get true that array is equal to array 2 and what is happening here is that since we're assigning the reference to array 2 what javascript is going to do is javascript doesn't assign a new place in the heap memory instead it's going to have addr542 the reference it's copied from here and this would also point to this so when you say array is equal to array2 what you are doing is addr542 equals to addr542 and that is equal and so we get true in the console and one more thing i want to show you let me change this back to let i use const a lot after we assign the reference that array holds to array2 let's say we do something like 
array 2 is equals to 4, 5, 6. Now I'm going to do console log array equals to array 2. If I run this again, we get false. Now what happens here is that on this line, the reference that array holds in the stack memory would be copied to array 2, which means array 2 is equal to array. But here, when we use the assignment operator to assign this array to array 2, it means this value will now be stored somewhere else in the heap memory and that reference will be applied to array 2. It means that a different place in the memory would be assigned to 4, 5, and 6 and we'll call this ADDR900 and then array 2 which was initially pointing this place since we did array 2 equals to array. By now executing this line it means array 2 will now point to this new memory location and the reference in the stack memory will now be ADDR900 and now ADDR900 is not equal to ADDR 542 and that is why we get false. So I hope you see how primitive data types works and reference data types works. With primitive data types, value is stored directly on the stack memory as we saw in different examples. Let's say number 90. 90 will be stored directly on the stack memory but for reference data types, the value is not stored directly on the stack memory. It is stored somewhere in the heap memory with an address and that address would be stored on the stack memory and this is how it works for object arrays and functions while every other primitive data types like strings booleans null and the rest they are all stored directly on the stack memory so i hope these visual examples and code examples shows you how when you are comparing two values even though they look similar they will not be equal the reason for that is you may be comparing the references and not the values when you compare primitive values you don't have any problem you are comparing the values that are on the stack but when you are comparing reference values you are not comparing the values themselves you are comparing the references that are on the stack. So I hope this gives you a good understanding of these groups of data types. Like I mentioned earlier, understanding this will give you a deeper knowledge of JavaScript and you'll be able to avoid a lot of errors that could occur when you're working with different data types, especially objects. I hope this was simple enough. If it was, please give this video a like, share, and subscribe for more simplified videos on JavaScript like this. And as well, you can check out a couple of more JavaScript videos that I have on my channel.